it, it's scarier now to me than it it was always scary but now it is scarier than ever before and so andrew giuliani he is uh, an assistant to trump he works in the white house um and he so he's had direct contact with people in the white house um rudy giuliani's team um sydney powell jenna ellis they've been holed up in arlington in a hotel in preparation for this insane bat conspiracy theory laden press conference for days andrew giuliani the whole team so they've all been exposed to it rudy uh they just came out jenna ellis and rudy just tested negative but who knows it takes a while for it to show up and andrew just tested positive as of today so who knows um I was in very close contact with Rudy and the lawyers. I did not personally see Andrew. Um, apparently he was in the back of the room, which the room is very small. So like, we were all close to, to everyone. Uh, so I'm, I'm upset. I'm really sad. Um, and like, honestly, one of my sons is, uh, I won't get into too much of his personal information because that's not my place to do, but this, uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to cry, but this is this is particularly hard for him. He's really scared, so uh, it's hard. Will you uh, allow me to go on a rant? Yes, do. <laughs> because I've kind of had enough. I've really had enough, and I, I just don't have any talent. Is this a no glasses rant? Or? Uh, <laughs> not yet. I okay. I don't even have tolerance for the Corona truthers. If there's Corona truthers in the chat, just I don't care. Get rid of them or don't don't bother with them. Because I just, I don't have any tolerance. And the re, uh, you know, in part, not that Jen's not her own woman and person, and she made the decision to go yesterday, but I kind of egged her on. So I'm a little mad at myself, uh, obviously. No, I wanted to go. Like, no, I know. Like, I don't dictate, I don't dictate if Jen goes or not. She's obviously no. has her own agency to do so. But part of me is upset at myself for not saying, I don't think you should go. I had no way. I had no way to know what the what the layout was. I didn't realize they were going to have it in a box in the side of uh, a hotel. But well, honestly, I thought it was going to be outside because Trump was posting the freaking address online, like I on Twitter. I thought like he wanted like supporters to come or whatever. But too. at this point, not that I consider most of the journalists that were there, because Jen's really the only one that challenged Rudy Giuliani, and for that she was you know, hurled every sexist, misogynist, right-wing lunatic attack under the under the sun on Twitter yesterday. Uh, really disgusting language against her. Uh, and, you know, I don't really use the sexism card much. I think that was an excuse in large part with Hillary and others. Uh, I mean, yeah. they wouldn't have treated me the way they treated her yesterday if, if I was the one challenging Rudy. That I could tell you. But the bottom line is, not only... Not only should journalists stop covering Trump's White House, uh, Rudy and his f***ing lunatic QAnon accomplices, this, this woman with the leopard shirt ranting that Venezuela and Cuba and China is in on this conspiracy. Not only should we, including status quo, not go to any more of these press conferences, not only should even the White House stop going to the press briefings with Kaylee McEnany, who's another cockamamie conspiracy theorist. I say this directly. They should boycott covering this White House because Donald Trump, his only source of oxygen is never-ending attention. He knows he, did, he, knew, he knows he lost, fair and square. And Rudy Giuliani, for whatever reason, whether it's the money or he's, you know, God knows what his relationship with is Trump, he knows it's all for show and it's all bullshit. But the sheer selfishness of these assholes, Rudy Giuliani, whatever the woman's name was with the leopard, Boris Epstein, who I happen to know, and Mark Meadows, who wouldn't wear a mask in front of the press, and all these people who wouldn't wear a mask. The, the, not, it's not only the fact that they're morons. It's not only the fact that they're truthers. They are literally willing to kill journalists. They are willing to kill 
their press people who are setting up these press conferences, they are willing to kill their family. Who knows how Rudy Giuliani's son got it? Maybe he got it from Rudy. They're willing to kill themselves because of Trump and the culture war. We know for damn sure Rudy Giuliani would be wearing a mask if Trump, beginning in March and April, made it a a patriotic duty to wear the mask. We know that Rudy Giuliani, the leopard lady, I don't know her name, Sydney something, would be wearing a mask if Trump said, made it a culture war not to wear a mask. We know they would be wearing a mask if Trump and Trump's organizations made MAGA masks or Trump's face on a mask, they'd all be wearing masks. Because it's not about the mask. It's not about, uh, it's not about science. It's not about anything other than they're following their cult leader. And the fact that Jen is now at risk, you know, God forbid, hopefully she ain't going to get coronavirus. But you want to know something? Uh, being packed in a room like that, where five people in the front are not wearing a mask, when Rudy Giuliani is pouring down sweat and hair dye and God knows what else was pouring down of him when the woman behind him covered her face at certain points yeah it's going to circulate because odds are one of those people have it and it really doesn't matter how many of the journalists were wearing masks because masks are like seat belts they make they dramatically lower the risk of contracting they don't eliminate it And the fact that they set this up, this press conference, in the corner of a room, where was it, at a hotel? When they- It was in the RNC building. The RNC building. When they sure as hell could have done it outside, and they sure as hell could have put a mask on. And now, it's not just Jen, by the way, the other journalists, I use journalists loosely, who are now, who were there with a mask, that are now seeing that Rudy Giuliani, son, has COVID. And in the coming days, maybe we'll find out that Rudy has COVID or Sydney has COVID or Boris has COVID or the other Neanderthals up there has COVID. They're all probably going to have to uh, quarantine away from their kids. They're all going to have to be panicked whether four or five days from now I'm getting, I'm going to have COVID. Journalism, yes, there are calculated risks you have to take. Uh, from protests, fr- uh, protests and elections or whatever, and we take the calculated risks. But usually those, those risks are not coming from the very people speaking at a press conference. They're usually coming from unforeseen things, police, um, natural disasters, war zones. Usually the people you're covering don't willfully put you at risk. And it's not only the fact that they are... Uh, reckless the 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 sheer uh, subtle fascism I don't think a lot of people noticed and Jen rightly called Rudy Giuliani on this first thing out of his mouth when Jen asked the question what fake news outlet are you so it's not only that they're actively just risking journalists they act actively are trying to harm journalists the reputation of, and, and I consider us far different than some of the other journalists in the room. But let's just, for argument's sakes, group us all as one. We're all journalists, right? They might not be the type of journalists we believe you deserve, but they, they put out stories, they cover things, whatever. The fact that your go-to visceral reaction is what fake news outlet are you with what fake news outlet are you i'm not going to wear a mask but you still have to come and listen to my conspiracy theories and the devil's advocate uh would say well jordan nobody forced jen to nobody's forcing you to go to these things you don't have to well i don't know yeah you're right nobody's forcing us but who's going to challenge an attempted coup d'etat of democracy I mean, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden. We're going to cover him later and the corporate Wall Street deficit douchebags he's uh, lacing up and lining up his administration with. But at the very least, when Hillary Clinton lost the campaign, she conceded that night. She didn't 
have a, an election fraud conspiracy. Uh, Mitt Romney, who I'm not a fan of, didn't either. McCain, who I'm not a fan of, didn't either. Trump is actively having lawmakers from Michigan fly to the White House to kiss his ring to keep up this charade. You literally have the recount in Georgia. Okay, it was a hand recount. So if it's rigged, if it was rigged on the machines, they did a hand recount. Is that rigged too? Was the hand recount that just recertified Biden as the winner? Is that rigged too? Is Venezuela hacking into the hand recount? Is China hacking into the... I mean, this is, this is more bad shit than the Russiagate conspiracy theory. This is more bad shit than name your conspiracy theory that's really bad shit. And by the way, Jen is the queen of conspiracy theories. She reads this shit like nobody's business. <laughs> Some conspiracy theories are true. And you still have progressive channels. Yes, let's name them by name. Convo Couch. These other, who I happen to like Fiorella. But they're out to lunch on this. Just standing in their, you know, stuck in their tracks. Stubborn as hell. Won't admit they're wrong. This is absurd. And by the way, if you're a progressive, you're actually helping Biden by actually fixating and focusing on this bullshit conspiracy that's not based in reality. Rudy Giuliani did not, Rudy Giuliani did not cite one piece of evidence. His evidence was, well, people are swearing in affidavits. Yeah? You've never heard of lunatics lying under oath? It happens every day in America. So, that was his evidence that he provided at this crazy press conference. But you still have progress out, progressive outlets pushing this shit. And by them pushing this shit and helping Trump and helping Rudy Giuliani, they're keeping the attention off. Right now, Biden is stacking his administration with Wall Street vultures, with congressmen that ha take the most oil and gas of anybody in Congress and have ignored their constituents in Louisiana who are living in Cancer Alley. I'm talking about you, Cedric Richmond. He's potentially uh, naming Janet Yellen as Treasury Secretary from the Federal Reserve, another neoliberal hack. Michelle Flournay. Yes, we're woke. We're going to name the first female uh, defense secretary who's been on the wrong side of every war and loves war, war, war. And has been part of the re revolving door, Jen, of uh, defense contractors and government. The fact that Jen and I are willing to take calculated risks, meaning I'm willing to go to a Trump super spreader event outside where nobody's wearing masks, I'm wearing a mask, I'm sanitizing this and that, and I'll let the, I'll let the chips fall where they fall. I have to separate from my wife when I do these things because she understandably uh, wants me to go get a test when I get home before we reunite. Her parents are a little older, doesn't want me, if I, if I have it again and don't know it and, and pass it on, Jen now has to quarantine from her kids. Her kids are understandably freaked out that she might have it. And who, who, who suffers the consequences? By the way, Axios reported Rudy Giuliani and the other f***ing hacks that spoke at this press conference yesterday didn't go to the White House today for Trump's meeting with these feckless Michigan lawmakers who Trump is trying to, you know, I guess even though it's irreversible at this point, he's getting he's trying to get Michigan lawmakers to fight the certification in Michigan. So Rudy Giuliani and these lawyers had enough respect not to go to the White House today because there was COVID. They've been around someone with COVID, i.e. Rudy Giuliani's son. So they follow science in that regard. They were around somebody who's COVID positive, so they won't go to the White House, but they can't. They can't. Indulge in the tyranny of wearing a mask. They can't hold a press conference outside instead of in a corner of the RNC. Don't think that wasn't intentional. Don't think the RNC couldn't have done it outside. If there was, I mean, there is no justice in this country. But if there was, some of these people need to be start getting criminal charges for reckless endangerment. Politicians who refuse to wear a mask. This fucking Fakakta governor of South Dakota. South Dakota is, I think, number one or two right now in cases. She's still with her culture war. No masks for us. We'd rather die than the tyranny of masks. The North Dakota governor, who's a conservative, 
uh, uh, as red as they come. He finally put in a mask mandate, and a sheriff, as I covered the other day, is saying, to hell with your mandate, Governor. I'm going to blow you off. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Thank you.